fantastic in the game. And um, offensively, we made some big plays. You know, it was kind of like, like the way we used to play. Um, we weren't we, – we, we, there was times we were, we were average. I think we had three or four series. We weren't very good, but we still hit big plays. And uh, so I was excited about that. Um, you know, a big day by Stoner. And then uh, – and obviously with the freshman running back, um, was able to, uh, to have a big day and run hard. Uh, but defensively, they were, we were really, really good. Um, I know they were down a couple starters on offense, um, but, but overall our defense was really good. Our pass coverage was good. Um, did some different things defensively today coverage-wise, and I think it really worked out well for our team. Members of, the, members of the media, if you have a question for Oklahoma State Coach Mike Gundy, please click raise hand and we'll try and get to you. Our first question is going to come from Joseph Fazio from the Ocali. Go ahead, Joseph. Yeah, Mike, Dylan Stoner had a pretty career day today. Can you just talk about uh, how much it is to have a guy like him step up for his team when your number one receiver is out? Yeah, you know, Dylan's been, been, a, been a really good player and he's been a solid player and reliable for us for a number of years. And so, you know, with Tylen not available, that uh, it's good that he could step up and make some big plays. Obviously, he made a big play early in the game and kind of got things going for us offensively. So, you know, he's a guy that's been around a long time, and uh, we're appreciative of what he's done for this, this program. All right, thanks, Mike. Our next question is going to come from Frank Bunner of the Tulsa World. Go ahead, Frank. Hey, Mike. Last week, uh, giving up the big plays was a big – a big deal for the defense last week. What did you think about the way they responded and, you know, held Baylor today? Well, obviously they played really well. I mean, you look at the numbers and, and uh, uh, they, were, they were excellent. Um, again, we did some things different coverage-wise in this game and it worked out well for us. So with, uh, you know, credit due with the, with the schemes, uh, the schemes were really good. Uh, and then we were able to get some pressure on their quarterbacks with just a four-man rush. And then looking at what Jackson was able to do, you know, last week and the week before, and then what Richardson was able to do today, just how excited are you about the future of this running back room? Well, we're pretty, you know, pretty good deal. You know, we got we got uh, Richardson for five more years, and we have Dez for I think three. So, uh, so I'm excited about the direction we're going uh, with those guys, and um, you know, maybe we can get some linemen back here and, and keep some of those guys healthy. We hold our breath on the offensive line every game. Um, so I'm excited about those those guys and what they bring to the table for the next three or four or five years. Thank you. Our next question comes from Scott Wright from the Oklahoman. Go ahead, Scott. Mike, how important was it to have a performance like this uh, at, at this time, just to, to get some good vibes, some good momentum within this program? Well, every game, each week, you know, we have a responsibility to go play and play the very best we can. I, we don't necessarily concern ourselves much with that. Um, we, we take it week to week. That's what college football is. Uh, so you know, we told the players last Sunday that, um, you know, we came up a little bit short at TCU, but we've got another game to play. So let's get back to work. Coaches got to push hard. Players got to push hard, got to rally together. And, you know, the strength of the organization helps you in times like that. And, that's why they were able to play so well today. And to have one that wasn't coming down to the wire had to had to be a good feeling. Well, it, it's a lot easier on a, on my heart, that's for sure. Um, but uh, we hadn't had it much of many of those lately, so I, I didn't actually know what to do with eight or six or eight minutes, and I was still kind of chewing on guys, and I guess I shouldn't have been. But uh, but it was nice for us to have a really good win. Thanks, Mike. Our next question goes, comes from Marshall Levinson of Pokes Report. Go ahead, Marshall. Yeah, Coach, what can you say about Spencer's uh, day today, one of his better performances, and it seemed like he was a lot more comfortable or uh, kind of in, in the play calls. What, what can you say about him today? Well, obviously he played good. You know, he, he, uh, he made a mistake on the first interception. He, he was in the wrong place with his read. Got him in a little bit of trouble. The second one, um, you know, jump ball, we, we – we make a living with those balls. We got to go fight and win that battle. But overall, he was effective in what we asked him to do today in the game plan. And without watching the tape, it looks like that he played pretty solid mentally in his reads. And then what can you say about what was the dialogue after Trace went down? It looked like there were several players, including yourself, uh, talking to the Baylor sideline or people that direction. Do you know what happened on that one? 
Well, we're going to wait and see once we watch the tape. Um, I don't want to say anything right now before I watch the tape and see what actually happened on that play. Thank you, Coach. Coach, you've been saying this week and even in past weeks that you've been happy with how the team has been practicing and how the energy has been good and, and all of that. Um, you know, that takes a collective discipline. And also the fact that you get through the entire regular season, no COVID um, delays or anything like that as a result of Oklahoma State also kind of speaks to collective discipline. Um, as a coach, you've got to take some joy in seeing a performance like this for this group. Um, can you maybe touch on that a little bit and, and unpack it a little bit? Well, we, we, had the, we had the best plan of anybody for COVID from day one back in the spring. And um, our medical staff, our doctors and our trainers um, were ahead of everybody else. Um, bringing our guys in as soon as we could to get them in and start finding out and getting information was, was a highly, highly intelligent move. And you have to give our medical staff a ton of credit for their plan. Um, we finished the regular season and did not lose one starter to COVID. Ten games, three open dates, not one starter did we lose to COVID. So I think it, it's, it's really clear that our medical staff, the plan we had and how we attacked it was fantastic. And um, now there's more time off. Now you're a little concerned um, because, you know, we, we're not going to practice every day. We're going to give the players a little freedom, let their bodies recover so they won't be around as much. So hopefully we can avoid it because we all know that it's a scary situation when it, if you just kind of let a little bit of it drift in, all of a sudden it can get you. But our players have been really disciplined and the plan that, that our medical staff had clearly was better than anybody else's plan. All right, our next question is going to come from Scott Wright from the Oklahoman. Go ahead, Scott. Mike, you kind of touched on it, but how different is this, uh, this next couple of weeks going to be? It's not a, not a typical bowl season. I mean, nothing's been normal this year, but how different is it going to be? Well, we're going to give them four or five days off, and then we're going to um, – let some of the young guys practice later next week. Let the other guys just hang out. Um, I don't think that we'll be in a bowl game before the 29th uh, or 31st, somewhere in that area. So um, that'll give us a chance to, um, to let the guys be with their families at Christmas if they can find a way to get that accomplished. Um, we still have testing. Okay, so we, we have to follow testing protocols so we can't give them as much, as many days off as we do in the past. And then obviously when you get ready to go play in the bowl game, you're looking at a, a one night trip. It just becomes a road game. So it is different. Um, we have a plan in place. We built that scenario um, a week and a half ago. And um, we've been following that in our organization for the last uh, 10 days. And so now we have a plan moving forward to um, allow our players to have some time off, um, allow them to be able to get with their families over Christmas if possible, and then stay within, within testing protocol before we start to get ready for the bowl game. Thank you. All right, and our final question is going to come from Barry Trammell from the Oklahoman. Go ahead, Barry. Yeah, Mike, it, it, we've seen Boston College and Pitt both say, we don't want to go to a bowl. The players have been through enough. Did you guys give any consideration to that? And, and what, what led to the decision, hey, that playing a bowl is the best way to go? Uh, I, I don't, I'm not for sure what, what took place with uh, Pitt and Boston College. Um, I don't know if – I mean, I haven't, I haven't spent any time uh, – somebody mentioned to me what happened. But, um, yeah, we're, we're, we're just going to stay the course. Um, I mean, as I said earlier, uh, we've been clearly uh, one of the best teams in the country in, in COVID and dealing with it. So um, hopefully we can stay as healthy as possible and give the guys a chance to play in another game.